all my Carline people. It's so good and exciting to see you back for week number four. Obviously, this does not look like my car. It is my closet. We are in the middle of quarantine, which hopefully by the time someone's watching this video, we will be out of quarantine. But I figured real life, we're not going anywhere in the car. We're just stuck at home. So welcome to my closet. If you haven't met me yet, my name is Becky, and I'm so excited to have you for an awesome week of Carline. In our group, there is a video called Carline Introduction Video, and I would love for you to check that out so you know what to expect from our study. This week, uh, over the weekend, I posted our online file, also our printable file, and I also made available a super cool playlist for you to listen to and get in the mood for what we're going to be talking about with this week's study. We are an awesome community of online believers who want to dig into God's word. And our goal is to speak truth and love and to focus on the Bible and lay aside our preferences. So we're so excited to have you join us if you are new to our group. And if you're not, welcome back. It's so good to see you. We love, or I love, to do an advice of the week. Um, I'm by no means a Bible study expert, um, but I have learned a couple things, and I'd love to share them with you. Um, this is the week of preparation. So all in my day planner for every week of the year, I have some kind of marker. On this week, it's these ye little yellow stars. And that means that before I put one more thing on that week, um, I'm going to write down my Bible plan for that week, what I want to study. Uh, it doesn't always happen, but that's my way of saying, hey, God first. If you're going to get through whatever you're going to put on this day, you need to make sure that you have your God time in. Martin Luther was a super awesome dude in the 1500s who led a huge reformation in the church. And he would say, I spend three hours in prayer every morning. And if I'm extra busy that day and I have extra things to do, then I spend four. Which in the world's eyes sounds backwards. Wouldn't I spend less time with God if I have more things to do apart from God? Um, but Martin Luther knew that he would need more strength and more connection with God to get anything done. So um, even though it's hard sometimes, I know I often push aside my God time in order to accomplish things. Um, really what we need to do is make sure that we're getting that God time so that we can accomplish things. So advice of the week, you have it. Let's talk what we're going to study this week. Our study this week, um, the theme is leaning into hard instead of running away. Um, we live in America, and I feel like our American slogan could be, avoid pain and live the easy life. It's what we like to do. Um, we, I have been learning that easy doesn't always equal good, and that hard doesn't always equal bad. Um, in learning all of these things and learning how to suffer well, I have three recommendations for you. The first is a 30-minute, um, I guess you could call it like a podcast, and it's by Steve Brown. If you Google kiss a demon on the, li on the lips, it will take you to his ministry, Key Life, and you can listen to it there. I'd also like to recommend Jay and Catherine Wolf's Suffer Strong podcast. And the third thing that I would like to recommend is a book by Lisa Turkhurst called It's Not Supposed to Be That Way. So if you have time, if you do the study and you're like, whoa, I need more, um, those are three great places to go. Our key verse this week, it's actually three verses from James, James 1, 2 through 4. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. All right, here's a story I wrote called Seatbelts and Suffering. When we first met Lily, she was a shell. I left the orphanage, went back to our hotel room, crawled as far as I could underneath the heavy goose down comforter, and told my husband Mark from my homely fort in a muffled voice that I would be spending the rest of my life rocking that child in a rocking chair. He didn't disagree, but then she bit him. And in that painful transfer of saliva, I think God spoke to him. There was life inside that little shell of a person, and Mark was determined to make it grow. So from that point on, he decided that no matter how hard it got, Lily was going to do what the rest of us did, because he believed she could. Truth bomb. 
it got bad before it got good. There were a lot more biting incidents. There was head banging. There was screaming fits and kicking tantrums and sobs that shook me to my very core. There was stimming and rocking and intentional bedwetting and self-harm and manipulation and serious spiritual warfare. There were very real strongholds and maybe even demons that did not want Lily to come alive. And every time we worked to pull her out of her pale auburn-haired shell, they pulled back hard. Our biggest battle, I think, had dealt with a seatbelt buckle. Even though she only sat in a booster, when Lily first came home, she couldn't even get into her seat by herself. I would lift her in, kiss her nose, buckle her up, and off we would go. As she got stronger, she was able to get up and down on her seat without any help. Yay! We celebrated. And then, Daddy made a thunderous proclamation. Lily is going to learn how to buckle and unbuckle her seat belt all by herself. Lightning flashed in that little girl's eyes, and I felt the ground shake beneath my feet. I wasn't sure why, but I knew definitively that Lily had taken Mark's statement as a declaration of war. We didn't just throw her in. There were weeks, months even, of teaching, of helping, of support. After a whole bunch of effort on everyone's behalf, Lily showed that she was completely capable of both buckling and unbuckling her seatbelt all by herself. She decided, however, that she just didn't want to. I was exhausted, burned out, weak, and not ready for this war, but Daddy was prepared. And his biggest weapon was his belief that suffering through this trial would be good for Lily. You see, buckling and unbuckling her seatbelt was hard. It took concentration and effort and time. And in the beginning, it probably made her fingers and her hands sore. It would be so much easier if we would just do it for her. I am going to be honest. I often gave in, but daddy never did. In the mornings, we would drop the boys off at school and come home. If daddy was there, he would come out to the driveway to cheer Lily on. And many days, she would refuse to try. So daddy would send Lily and I into the house so we could start our homeschool work, and he would sit in the van with Lily. Sometimes they sat for hours. Sometimes they would both be covered in sweat when they came inside, not from heat, but from exhaustion. I'm sorry, and frustration. Not from heat, but from frustration. I am trying to be a multitasker, which is very, very bad. Sometimes Lily would angrily and purposefully soil herself and he would lovingly carry her in, change her clothes, wash off her car seat, and then take her back outside and buckle her back in and wait for her to do what he knew she could. He always outlasted her. And when she finally unbuckled that stinking buckle, he celebrated the hardest. See, Daddy had been given a gift as a child, the gift of suffering, and he knew that while it had been an unwanted gift, it was one that had proved most valuable to him, and he was determined to give that gift to Lily. He knew that suffering would produce life in her, a force so powerful that she would be unbeatable, and he knew that she would need that force to defy all of the odds stacked against her. She would need it in order to succeed. There's this temptation in our society to keep our children from suffering. We who are parents have a fleshly desire to make sure our children don't have to go through hard things. I fall victim to this all the time. Oh boy, you probably know what's coming. A big fat butt. See, that's not the way God parents us. He gives us the gift of suffering and we have a choice. We can lean into it, defying Satan and facing our fears and growing our faith, or we can run from it, turning instead to idolatry or medication or addiction or distraction. But if we choose to run from suffering, we choose to run from God, from growth, from abundant, spirit-changing, sanctifying life. We miss out on all the good God wants to shower upon us. And we choose instead to dabble on the fringes. We choose to die slowly and comfortably and complacently. 
because we are afraid of the cost of really living. I am so tired of dying. I want to live. I want to run as fast as I can and do a cannonball right into the deep end of hard, painful, heart-wrenching, spirit-filled suffering because that is where God will be at his most powerful, his most provisional, his most present, his most precious. That is where my fears are conquered by faith because that is where I learn that no matter what happens to me, my God is with me. No matter what injury I suffer, my God has the power to heal me. No matter how big of a mistake I make, my God is capable of redeeming it. That is where I learn to long for heaven and daydream about a supper table filled with all of the foregone saints and the distant friends who are suffering on their own battle fronts. A table where the food supply never ends and the most delicate desserts are sweetened by conversations of worship. That is where I can finally let go of all that doesn't matter and be washed anew in all that does. Run with me, friends. Let's jump in together. James 1, 2 through 4. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Thank you guys so much. Let's pray. Actually, let's wait before we pray. <laughs> I'm so sorry. In today's post, ah, we're going to do something crazy. I want you guys to share three things that you are afraid of. They can be funny or they can be serious, but they need to be real fears. Um, I'll go first. I'll share with you my fears in our post today. Now, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the gift that you give us, the gift of suffering. I pray that you will um, uh, just remind us that you are with us. And I thank you for letting us even do this together so that we don't have to do it alone. I confess that I run from you because I am so afraid that getting close to you will hurt. Um, help me to be brave. Help all of us to be brave. Help us to trust you and help us to suffer well. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Guys, thank you so much for meeting me in my closet and for dealing with my crazy brain today. I uh, can't wait to see you tomorrow. Bye.